It's been a while since I talked about PvP, and I'm excited to say that PvP has improved since then. At the same time, there are a lot of places where PvP can be improved, and tweaks to the system that are needed, and there are some aspect of the games that need to be scrapped altogether. Let me go through these points in order of what I think are the most important to overall game health. First and foremost, I want to talk about the units and their collision. I 100% agree that archers should not be able to walk through or go under other archers, because that would break the game. But there are some units that should be allowed to pass over other units. Bombers should never get stuck behind archers. Healers should be able to walk through flag bearers. And flags should be able to walk through healers. I think one of the dev team's highest priority is this, because I think watching a fight and losing it because of bad pathing and stuck units is going to get more and more common the bigger the game and the bigger the fights become. The next thing I want to talk about is the balancing of units. The team already knows the problem of busters and balloon busters, and they've already nerfed tanks and buffed paladins. But after playing the last session of PvP, the meta has not changed at all. Tank meta still dominates the scene, and the same units that were undesirable are still not wanted by anyone. Paladins are still bad. A mild health buff, damage buff, and very slight reduction to damage inflicted doesn't change its status as worst tank unit in the game in both PvP and PvE. But the sad thing is that it's even worse because Paladins will take less damage from a melee unit, but the melee unit applies a 99% healing debuff. So a hurt Paladin will spend the rest of the fight at critical HP waiting for death. I don't need to talk about how absurd level 30 tanks are because they're still the meta. Everyone loves them. Bombers and Barbarians are the kings of PvP because of AoE. The bomber will attack the tank and splash damage on any melee nearby, killing them. Rogues and flying rogues, at least in mid-large scale battles, are just worthless unless someone in the opposing group messes up. And it's entirely due to their pathing in AI, where they think it's a good idea to go through a meat processor in order to get closer to their target. I could go on, but I think those problems are the biggest in terms of units. Have any other complaints about units? Leave them in the comments. Oh, also, this is Hooks begging you to subscribe and hit the bell so I know you guys want more Stream Raiders content. Please and thank you. Next up is a package deal concerning the power bar, placement phase, symbols, neutral zones, and the meta. Quite frankly, there exists the problem of a captain filling up very quickly and the opponent having all the time in the world to counter all their plans and just wreck them, usually with busters. Neutral placement zones are effectively dead in mid to large captain fights because if anyone places anything in them, it'll just die horribly. Placement markers are purely suggestion and nobody needs to follow them, which I personally believe that's a problem. The power bar is fine, but there exists a problem where some units are undervalued or overvalued in the current play. There has been talks of a sub-only mode or skin-only mode to play with captains, but I have a suggestion. Make do not place markers the only markers that must be followed. With everything else being a suggestion. Or have a mode where all symbols must be followed so that the blame can be on the captain and not the dev team. Captain mode or something. The captain should have a right to throw out bad units or request units not to be placed somewhere because there are cases where even one unit costs everyone the match and player agency isn't a good enough excuse to not at least have the option to have a mode such as that. I also think that the neutral zone should be revamped, where if you place a unit in the neutral zone, it counts as half power used. This way, there is incentive to put units in the neutral zone. If this change would be made, I would also think that it would be necessary to make it so that units that explode are not allowed in the neutral zone. Vengeful warriors, cursed flags, all busters, etc. Lastly, as far as the placement phase goes, I think there should be a hold mode where the captain temporarily halts all unit placements in the battle. This would help in the event that he won't fill up too quickly and could wait a few minutes to have his last placements counter his opponent's counter, while also risking that they won't cap. 
I think this would help because I sometimes see a good number of people get stuck watching their strategy get picked apart for 5 whole minutes while they've reached the cap after 1 minute. This should be a sort of toggle. Lastly, in regards to the meta, the meta hasn't changed since the inception of PvP, and I think that new PvP events should have dynamic buffs and changes to the existing classes to temporarily make them more interesting during PvP play. Something along the lines of archers do double damage or something, or rogues are immune to melee weak. I think the last thing I want to talk about are the queue times. Mid and small captains are fine, but large captains are in an eternal dance with the queue timer. Last event I experienced the scenario where there were only three large captains, so one captain had to sit out while two battled, over and over again. What's worse was when those two went to sleep and left me alone, I waited a total of three hours to get a match. I was saved by a very nice streamer that was my new dance partner until I finished my 30 wins. If the team could come up with a solution to this after they fixed everything else, I would greatly appreciate it. That's all for now folks. Did I miss anything? Drop your suggestions in the comments or better yet, the stream raiders feedback section. I'll see you all next time. Love you guys.